Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this is a uh, update on my Henrik. Now, as you know, rabbits multiply. Um, being he's a hare, you'd think it would be better, but it's not. It appears that hares multiply. And this fabric was just screaming at me as I was packing it away. So I'm making two rabbits. Now, what I decided to do is because my panel that um, Susanna and I are sharing is very precious and I just don't want to cut it the wrong way. I thought I'd make a prototype rabbit and I guess that's going to help me know exactly where I want my beautiful embroidered panel to go. So this little guy is going to be more like the scrappy rabbits that you see in all the photos with a little bit of embroidery. If anything, it'll be embellishing the image of the rose with some thread. So I'm making two rabbits. And when I finished also the last video and started packing away uh, my fabrics, I sort of felt like I had girl rabbits. Did you notice that? There was a lot of pink lace and doilies. So these are girlfriends to Henrik. Their pattern is Henrik, but these are a lady rabbits. Well, they're not rabbits, they're hares. I've got to use the right terminology. So I just thought I'd give you an update of where I'm at because I've cut all my pieces out. I laid my pieces out on my fabric, cut them out, and I marked in key locations certain things, like this is the leg or the arm, the foreleg. You need to mark in that little dart. I'll show you why in a moment. Um, the tail's pretty simple, just cut two of them. That foreleg, you cut four of them. Here's the hind leg, and you cut four of that as well. Nothing really to do there in the way of marking little special things. The ear was pretty straightforward, cutting four of them and the gusset of the head. Now I'll show you also a little bit about the gusset when we get to it. And then the body of which you cut two, but you do need to mark on your fabric once you've cut it out. This point, that point, that point, and that point. The gusset which goes across the top of the hare's head, lines up to all those little markers. Okay, you'll, you'll understand it when you um, watch the video that Linda, uh, not Linda, uh, Leslie has made on her YouTube channel. I won't go into all of that side of things because she explains it really well. It is tricky, but let me just say it is not easy. And it sort of reminded me why I don't make a lot of toys because when you, you're sewing these curves, it's sort of, yeah, huh, tricky, but it's doable. It's very forgiving too because we're patching over it. So if it's a little bit bodgy in a few spots, don't stress because you're going to be patching over it anyway. So the only other thing is the back piece. Um, and there's two little points here to mark because they all connect with these three pieces as this all comes together. It'll make sense in Leslie's video. <clears throat> now, the other thing is don't forget to run the arrows parallel to the selvage. Spoke about in the last video. Now, placing the pieces on the fabric, I placed these two pieces like this. Now, I took a photo just to show you. Okay, so the fold of my calico is over here and that's the cut edge and that's the selvage over this side. And of course the roll of the fabric's just sitting out of view. So the, the body went here, making sure that the, the line through the center was parallel to the edges of my fabric. And this back piece, you only need one of it. So it tucked in nicely there. Now, I think my calico is wide. Um, just having a look at the 90 centimetres. So it's 90 centimetres wide, um, folded in half. Okay, so that gives you a bit of an indication of the width of my fabric that I'm using. So if you had wider fabric, well, then you'd have more space to the side here, but I don't. I've only got an, a 90 centimetre piece folded in half, so that's 45 centimetres there. So I have to drift my patterns across. But what I will say is because this piece, the back, you only cut one, underneath was some fabric. And in that space, I cut out um, some forearms. And I sort of 
if you picture that piece sitting on the fabric, I sort of just did that with the forearms. I got one that way and that one that way. And I think there was even enough room to get the, the tail up the top corner here. So that's using the underside that's not needed for the body. So don't get caught and cut two of them. You only need the one and that excess will get you some other pieces. And then I started laying the legs up here and the ear and then I twisted that leg the opposite way, tucked it in on itself, and that got me all of the legs I needed. I did need some um, another set of ears, so they sort of, the fabric rolled out again, and I cut the ears out. But look, all this depends on the width of your fabric. So you'll definitely, um, if you aim for a meter and a half of fabric, I believe you'd have plenty left, plus you need some to bind all of the wire. So I read a little bit more of the instructions. My wire should be fine. I was concerned it was a bit thin. She actually uses it double. So it's actually going to be very thick. So you fold it around, say, this little arm. Well, you don't use it in the arm, I don't think. You use it in the leg. You create the shape of this foot by looping the wire through and around, and then it sort of comes out. And then you do it again, so it's really rigid. It really helps our, our hairs to stand. And then you can bind it. Um, you can bind it with calico by wrapping it around, or you can use masking tape, or you can actually create a tube for it to slide into, as long as it's sort of held together and nice and sturdy. My phone's pinging. Sorry, guys. Let's turn that off. Um, so as for the actual pieces... Now, um, little tips, the arms are pretty straightforward. You do need to create these two little uh, darts and then I just trimmed off the excess and then stitched around, pretty straightforward. Those darts are represented where on the pattern? There, so before I um, stitched the two sides together, it's just a case of joining the little arrow points together finding your line and sewing straight through there and you can cut that excess fabric off and then when it opens out you've like pinched in his little foot to give him a little bit of shape um that was pretty straightforward that's one i've stitched around the perimeter now so there's the dart is stitched in gone around the outer edge and then i've turned that leg the right way so there's the little dart it just helps give it a little bit of shape Okay, so that's his forearms. His legs, same sort of thing, pretty straightforward. Whipped around the outside of it. I started turning this one. I thought, no, I'm going to turn the video on, just show you what I've done. So that's the leg. Before you do the leg, once again, you've got some little darts to put in place. I actually, no, they're not darts. They're actually cut out already. So it's a case of joining that together with a line of stitching. Okay, so that is done on both of the pieces. And then I've whipped around the outside, leaving this open at the foot, the bottom of the foot, because that's where the wire and the stuffing is going to enter. And then you slip stitch that closed. And here's the second foot that I've turned the right way. I did snip in around here like that, just to help that fabric ease around any bends. It's recommended on uh, Leslie's video, but I sort of kept going and sort of snipped in a few places, just to take a bit of pressure off these corners when you turn it the right way. Leslie mentions that you're gonna need an old paintbrush, and this will help when we're stuffing it, plus also help turn out any corners that you just can't get your little fingers into. But it's not too bad. I did, um, I did remove all my fingernail length last night and I found it really difficult not only to pick up pins, going into a sewing project with no fingernails is probably not the brightest move, but um, I found it also hard to turn the fabric because I sort of didn't have my claws to grab it there's that little dart there sort of helps create the pad of his foot if that makes sense and now his foot's got a bit of a, a base to it so very tricky very tricky simple so far so that's the two legs done one turned the right way so I'm yet to do that 
the ear shouldn't be too much problem. It's just a case of turning it the right way. I did snip around everywhere just to take a bit of pressure off that fabric. And then that'll be decorated with whatever I choose to make his tail, whether it's fur or hessian or who knows. Decision for another day. So I'm just turning that the right way. Let's just get that around. And then I left the side open because I think we've got to put a little bit of wadding in there. Probably don't have to, but I think I will just to give it a, a bit of a puffy feeling. So that's looking good. And there's my seam ready to stitch shut once I get a little bit of padding in there to make his tail fluffy. I'm wondering if it stitches on like that or it... So I can't even pick the fabric up with my fingers or it goes more sideways. I don't know. We haven't got to that stage whether it sits like that on him. Oh, who knows? I think it sits like that against his back. That makes sense. Okay, the ears, um, same thing. Just stitch around them like so. Uh, I haven't turned it yet because I just know I'm going to struggle with my fingers through here. So I'm definitely going to need this to sort of push it through. Uh, I'm pretty sure we create a wire that goes right through here and then she stitches it again so that the wire stays in position and then you start decorating from there. So the ears should be nice and easy to do but I'm not going to do that on camera because I will embarrass myself because I just can't get hold of it. Plus my fingers are cold. I don't know what's going on. Okay, now this is um, the head and body and back all joined together. So um, what you'll find is the gusset joins onto the back piece. So before you do anything, you have to make a decision on whether the head is going to be a pretty fabric that you're going to sort of base your whole... Uh, hair from like I am here so I've chosen this Sanderson fabric so that piece was cut out and then this was the calico the big back they have to be joined before you go anywhere so you can see there they're joined so it becomes one piece then you can think about putting on your side which if you go to Leslie's video, she will give you the tips on where she starts the process, which is pretty much under the neck here. She starts sewing and whips around right through to the back of the bottom of him. Um, marking your marking points, joining those with pins and then using that as a way to get there is definitely the trick. This is really tricky in here. I did it just, it's a bit bodgy. And I did catch the fabric and pinch it a little bit here. See that? But I don't think it'll matter too much because we put <clears throat> a piece of fabric over all of this to create his cheeks and jowls with a little bit of stuffing. So I'm probably sweating on detail here that doesn't matter. But you can see where the fabric puckered. See that? I shouldn't show you. You'll be thinking I'm a bodgy crafter now, which I am. And in here was a bit tricky too, but I think it'll all sort of settle down once we start bringing fabrics up around his neck. And uh, there's wire to go in his head and body too to hold him up. So that's the, the aim of the game there. It's just the main thing is decide, are you going to put a decorative piece here? Now, this is why I'm doing a second rabbit because I'm just not sure if I cut my beautiful panel up and put in a piece here that I then embroider or do I make him all in calico and put that piece over the top so I have these rough little edges here from where the side patch would meet the top patch just not sure so I'm going to have a play with this guy first before I chop into my fabric so that's pretty much the body done the legs done the arms or legs done forearm back uh, hind leg and oh, start again get the right terminology hind leg and foreleg so you can sort of see what we mean by that when you have a think about the rabbit 
uh, tails done um, and the ears are prepped. Just everything now needs to be turned the right way. And the next stage is getting my wire ready to start inserting and stuffing. And Leslie has um, lots of videos, so I'm not sort of too worried about even showing you that. But I probably will come back with um, definitely some tips on what I found. Okay, I think that's it. I can't believe I'm making two. That's just so typical. It's never one journal. It always just turns into three, whatever. It's typical. But it will be good to have a play with it first and sort of, I think too, once he's three-dimensional in front of me, as an example, with no pressure, I can then look at him and go, oh, this piece of fabric would be better there or there. So, yeah, either way, can't hurt to have a couple hairs kicking around the craft room. All right, guys, I will leave you in peace and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now. Hello, I'm back. I just wanted to turn the camera on and take you through the next stage that I've completed and that is getting an ear ready and I've only done the one so far. My plan is to show you how I got the ear to this point. I've also cut out on some hessian the template again because I want to use the hessian somewhere on the ear to decorate him. Now I'm not sure if it'll be on the inside and then more fabrics or it will be on his back of his ear with very few fabrics. I'm sort of thinking along those lines, but I don't know yet. I just knew that I wanted Hessian somewhere, so I've cut an extra two ears to be my base. I may even have to cut four if, if Hessian becomes very much part of the design. Now, that could have been the green fabric with the flowers on it too, which might still happen. That's beside the point. That's a, a decision for a later date. What this is all about is just showing you the techniques that I've um, figured out after watching the YouTube videos from Leslie and working out how to sort of prep my ear. So the first step is with the ear, you've got a stitch around the outside of the ear, leaving the end open so that you can turn it right sides. So I'm just going to do that. We're then going to cut a piece of wire and I think it worked out at 30 one inches long but I'll just show you how I did that as well so you can sort of see the other thing you're going to need while I turn this inside out I'll just keep talking the other thing you're going to need is strips of fabric now you don't have to use the calico you can use an old bed sheet or something just something you can rip up to create strips to wrap around the wire so that the wire doesn't shoot through your fabric and end up popping out of your rabbit. And there's wire in the leg, the bottom legs. There's wire up through the body. There's a ring of wire on his bottom so that he sits and there's wire in these ears. And that allows you to, you know, adjust the ears and sort of pose them. So I probably won't show you the wire in the other parts because once you sort of do the ears, you'll sort of get the gist of it. And Leslie has definitely got videos on the legs and putting the wire into the bodies, into the body and that base ring that I was talking about. But I couldn't see a video on the ears. So I thought I might just do that. And um, we'll go from there. Okay, so the ear is turned the right way. The next thing I did is I got the tape measure and Leslie shows this technique. And just run the tape measure around that ear perimeter and you would do the same for the other pieces the legs and the body to work out how much wire we need I think it was 31 I end up cutting so I cut a little bit extra so here's my wire the gauge of wire I made a comment that it wasn't two mil this is going to be plenty so one and uh, I think it was one and a half or one and three quarters it's fine if you only have really fine wire now I cut it at 32, so there you go, a little bit longer. Won't hurt to have that bit extra. If you have really fine wire, you can fold it in half, but this, this is more than enough. It's sort of pushing back on myself a little bit here, so that's going to give enough structure. Now the next thing I did is my fabric that I cut my pieces from was 90 centimetres wide. So I ripped three pieces 
at about an inch and I've joined those three pieces together to get one long piece, which pretty much was what I needed to do the job. So what I'm gonna do, just bear with me because it's a bit fiddly, is I'm going to just bend that over that corner. And this is purely just so that it stays there. It gets snipped and trimmed anyway because it's a little bit too long, but what you're gonna do, this is awkward, fiddly, but fun, is you're just going to wrap that fabric around the wire all the way along. Okay. Nice and firm. Now, Leslie then goes on to show you inserting the wire into the ear and then using your sewing machine. Sorry, I'm not in shot here. I just don't want to poke my eye with this wire. That's a little bit better. Yeah, um, she inserts the wire into the ear and then using the sewing machine pushes it out to the extremities and then the sewing machine runs another line of stitching around the uh, perimeter of the ear trapping the wire against the side seams so i'll show you that as well but i did it by hand i just felt like the sewing machine wasn't going to get in there as easy as leslie made it look so I end up just getting some very old crochet cotton and um, a needle and just running a little stitch around. Sorry I'm not on camera guys but I've got this wire flicking around here everywhere. Be very careful with your eyes. I'd hate to see someone get a jab in their eye. I saw uh, on Leslie's video that she actually wound this up onto a little bobbin. So that probably, let's have a look. Let's just think about this. I'm gonna use my glue. This might be better. I won't be manhandling it as much. Just remember that little detail. And I think I can see why, because by having it wound up yeah, I've got it all oh goodness me now it's twisted let me just untwist it then wind it <clears throat> you might as well see all of my fuddling around and that'll show you all the quick tricks all right so it was twisting on me so I started again just going to wind it onto my glue stick and I think this will be heaps better hence why Leslie did it I just had forgotten that little detail because now it'll be in my hand and I'll be able to just wind it around okay oh, now we're cooking look at that I've got control Good one. I've got control of my fabric. Oh, but it's a fiddly little rabbit. It's a hare, not a rabbit. There we go. How good is that? Much, much faster. first section of this video was 16 minutes so I just do have to keep an eye on the time because I don't want to go too long I'd rather stop it and come back to you because anything longer than an hour just takes forever to upload to YouTube but we're going okay <clears throat> I 
still can't decide what fabric's going where. And as I said, I, I'm doing two rabbits, so at least I can sort of try a few different things and see what I like, which would be really cool. Now yeah, we're cruising. Look at that. So that's why it pays to go and watch Leslie's videos and even watch them a couple times. They're only like six minute long videos. <clears throat> and you'll notice something every time probably. And then when you watch me, you'll be seeing how not to do it, how to do it, how to maybe find a new way to do it, which is typical, isn't it? You get patterns and once you've done them a few times, you find little shortcuts that make it easy for you. I just knew a glue stick would be handy. Okay, are we getting there yet? Slowly. Yeah, we're really cruising. Sorry, I've stopped talking, but I'm concentrating. And this exercise, um, she does mention when she, when you watch her ear video doing this, she's picked up a piece of wire from around her house that was coated in like a plastic. It's an electrical wire. And that has had the benefit of not having to do this. So maybe that's something. If you don't want to waste fabric in doing this step, find some plastic coated wire. Now I've really got everything twisted here. Not that it really matters because it's going on nice and thick, which is what we want to. So the wire sort of is protected. That's now we're cruising faster. Okay, so what I did because I'm coming to the end of this and to make it a little easier because you can't, I couldn't figure out how I was going to knot it. I actually just <clears throat> stitched there just to hold it. But I won't do that at the moment. Oh, will I? Hang on one moment. Let me grab my thread. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> I'll just put a little full clip there. It doesn't really matter because it's sort of all tucked up inside, but until it is tucked up inside, it sort of will unravel. So to stop that, I just put a few little stitches there just to hold it. You could even use um, probably a hot glue gun, but that just stopped that from becoming a mess as I fiddle around with it next. You'll see what I mean. We do a bit of fiddling and the other end's okay because I was able to wind it. Having said that, I've just looked at it and it too is just starting to unravel a little bit. And I might just turn that up on itself which I didn't do last time and I'm wondering if that might that little hook might stop it all from falling off so there's another little having done it once one a year already see this is just starting to unravel a little bit so before it gets away on me like so just gonna put a few stitches in can't hurt it is going to be too long, the wire, and you will need to trim it. But it actually, using my pliers, I was able to go through fabric and all. It cut the wire underneath, and then um, I was able just to then trim the fabric back. So this little step I'm doing here is purely just to keep it a little bit more under control as you fiddle with it. So it's encasing the wire, if that makes sense. Okay. 
This may be in the instructions. Like I said, I skimmed the instructions, which is probably to my detriment. So now we've got our wire. I'm going to find, I might just bend that as well. So I think that's a, a hot tip. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. Now I'm going to find the rough middle of those pieces. And we're going to insert that into the ear canal the center of your tube because we've stitched it right sides together turned it the right turned it out inside out and now we have our wire inside the ear so just sort of massage it so that the wire is up to the top there and out to the perimeter and you'll notice that your ear starts to take a nice shape so grab your pins then and just put some pins in around that perimeter, holding that wire out there. Now, as I said, Leslie did then run it around the sewing machine and put a stitch line on the inside holding that wire. I'm just going to do it with needle and thread and I think it'll work really well. So a couple pins, just pulling the wire, I'm sort of pulling apart the ear so that the fabric becomes taut. The wire is in that edge. And when I did the needle and thread, I made sure I actually pierced the wire, the fabric as well as I, as I went. I'll show you in a moment. And it's really secure then. It's just not gonna go anywhere. And come right down to the end with your pins. That's it. And this will get trimmed, that wire. So we've probably got an inch and a half extra that we're not needing. But that's okay. So everything's pinned. Now I'm just going to grab that cotton. And I'm using an old vintage one because it's not seen and it's, you know, was like 50 cents at Vinnie's. It's not, not going to be missed. You could just use a normal sewing machine thread. But if you've got some old crochet cotton or even a weird colour, you could probably, you know, use that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, that's a little bit tucked in there, I'm just going to hook that fabric back out of there because I'm losing valuable ear length. We don't want, want that. Just got a little bit caught up. There we go. There's quite a lot tucked in there. All right, so I'm now just going to what have I done? I don't know what I've done. This wasn't going through. So I'm now just going to do just a tacking stitch all the way along the ear, catching a little bit of that fabric as well. You don't have to all the way, but I just feel like it'll be really secure if that wire is not fiddling around in there. Especially on the ears because we can pose them so if kids are sort of having a play with your bunny's ears at least you know that 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 wire is nice and secure in there so I can remove that blue pin and I'm just doing a stitch if I bring that up to that I might zoom in a little bit okay there we go so I'm just coming up from behind, straight down. This is such a great idea. As I said, I think in the first video, I haven't made a lot of toys. I've done the odd doll, you know, when you get a kit at one of those gift fairs. And I actually find them a bit of a painful procedure. I really enjoy embellishing the dolls like the dresses and making clothes I, I enjoy that but the actual building of the doll's body I oh, find it laborious but this is actually quite fun because 
we're doing all this structural um, work. So I'm actually really enjoying it because there's a lot I've and hence I'm hand sewing this because I'm a I prefer to probably pick up a needle and thread and try that before I jump on the sewing machine. So I'm actually enjoying this because it's sort of the building of him. We don't stitch, I don't think, we, yeah, we don't stitch the wire into the body. We just place a bit of wadding around it as we stuff him and the wire all at the same time so that's internal. Um, the only other time we will stitch the wire again is on that circular base which helps him sort of sit his bottom on the ground and Leslie has a video about that how you create the ring wrap it in the fabric and then insert that into his bot and um, bring the bottom of the fabric sort of all together and that's at that stage that you could insert a small rock or a little bag of sand that helps him to become a doorstop Okay. I'm trying to go as fast as I can because we're at the 20 minute mark. We can go to about that 45 minute mark and we'll be pretty good. So I'm just whipping around as fast as I can here. So as I was saying, I've cut two hessian pieces using the template again. And of course they are now bigger than this piece in my hand because this piece in my hand has lost a 10 mil seam allowance as I made the, made the ear up, which is fine because then that allows me to stitch, you know, around the decorative fabric and it'll make the ear a lot bigger. This is purely the support within the decorative ear. Does that make sense? So the pattern piece says cut four of these, but I guess depending on how you're decorating your ear, you may actually cut another four in a pretty fabric. You may use patches of fabric and put them straight onto this element, but you've really got so many options. And I think that was half my trouble I was I can think of 20 different ways of doing this and I think that's why I started Two Rabbits because then at least I can show you a couple different ideas. I think my fabric, my, my green rabbit will call him and then there'll be the red rabbit. I think the green rabbit, um, oh, I don't know. I don't know yet. <laughs> going on with the conversation i haven't even made a decision i think once i get the fabrics in front of my hands and start to you know really play with him then i'll report back on my findings i'm in uncharted territory here i'm literally making this rabbit as i film so it's going to be really cool fun and it'll be flying by the seat of your pants Get rid of that pin, get rid of that pin before we have a an, an, uh, stick. So I'm just doing little stitches on the back, a little bit bigger stitches. Because this is going to be cladded with decorative elements, I'm not too worried about how they look. If you were using, say, the sewing machine idea and you'd sewed in that centre there or hand-stitched it, you might want to make it really neat so that your fabric, the next bit, would sit on the inside edge, which I might do with the green rabbit, but the red rabbit will have a bigger ear with this hessian being built into it, or vice versa. I, I, who knows? I don't want to make any commitments. I want wriggle room. And that's the thing with being creative and fabric. You sort of, you don't know where you're going. Well, I don't until you're there. And then something will come together and sometimes it's something you completely different to what you had thought out in your head and that's that's the bit i really like so i guess if you wanted a smaller narrower 
ear like what Leslie's used. You would use your sewing machine or your needle and thread and stitch a nice even running stitch around the ear. Mine's all over the place here because I'm going to add a layer to the ear. Does that make sense? It does in my head. I'll try and make the next one a little bit more um, decorative and probably similar to how Susanna has done. She's working on her ear as well. And through the center of that panel is that leaf pattern, consecutive leaf pattern. And that's the element that she's putting up the center of her ear. And she's done the cladding as well because it's such a wide piece that she's needing the whole width of that ear to actually lay on her decorative. And this is hidden in behind. So this would be stitched in behind and you'd never see it, which I think is the, probably the best way to go. And the main reason is, see how it's really narrow here? So you've lost 10 inches on that seam by creating the tube. It's got a little bit narrow for my liking and he's such a big lad. I tend to think that cladding it is probably the best way to go because you get then a better, you get a better width here. See, it's a big difference. So there you go, I've just made a decision. I will be cladding the ear both sides with a second cutout template. So it says cut four, four being in calico and four being in your decorative pieces, whether you've hand stitched, stitched a decorative piece together or you've um, you've um, you know what was I going to say you've hand stitched it together or you've cut a piece in its entirety like this hessian sitting here so what I'm doing there is I'm just about out of thread but I thought I'll just tack across there at least to hold that shut I'm just going to now knot that off but I'm going to get another piece of thread if I had a little bit more thread it would have been a little bit better because we need to trim the wire now so that it tucks up inside and then stitch that ear closed and then the wires nice and safe inside let's get rid of the hessian so what i'm going to do is just pull the ear back a little bit and then using my snippers cut see how that cuts straight through and then it's just a case of using my scissors to get rid of that excess just pull that down a little bit and the wire is now up inside. So same on the other side. Let's get rid of that pin before I cause myself an issue. I'm gonna pull back the ear fabric just a little bit. So I can get in there and snip off the wire. Trim off that fabric. So there's the excess wire that's come out where is it that and that okay so that's now gone that was a little bit of fabric that was involved now I can pull pull that end and just using my needle and thread tuck in that excess and I'm just going to run a stitch over the end there's probably other ways you can do this look like i said i didn't see a video on well there is an ear video there but i i didn't see how she attaches it to the hair it might be there i probably need to go and have another look through them all maybe there's a comment made and i've just missed it because i tend to watch it while i'm doing something so i'm probably not taking in all the information you know how it goes but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I'm sure we'll figure something out. So now my wire is fully encased just with a few extra 
stitches. Okay, better do another knot just for make sure it doesn't pop out that end. Okay, let me take the camera back up. All right, so I've got my scrappy bits. I can put them in the bin, put my needle out of the way. So now I have two rabbit ears encased in the rabbit ear pattern pieces stitched around the perimeter to hold the wire that's been wrapped in fabric and they're ready to go okay so now i'll start thinking about what i'm going to do to decorate them i'm really loving that hessian whether i do another piece of hessian and then start putting on pretty fabric or i do some embroidery i, I don't know a decision another day Okay, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. I hope that um, helped you. I hope that made sense. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.